In December 2022, the Gospel Coalition released an article on their website entitled 12 Questions for the Would-Be Universalist. Written by well-known author Michael McClyman, the article states that it is especially intended for those who are convinced of or inclining towards universalism, and it proposes that the universalist house is ultimately not worth buying. Well, I'm a convinced universalist, and I've bought the house, so I guess that means the article is for me. But I'm not really the echo chamber type. I like arguments for every side, so in this case, the annihilationist view, the conventional view, and obviously the universalist view. So when I saw Dr. McClyman's article and saw that it was written for convinced universalists, honestly, I thought I'd found a gold mine. But having packed my lunch for a long think, I found another run-of-the-mill article that misconstrues what Christian universalism is actually all about, at least the brand of universalism that I hold to and the brand that I seem to find in the early church. Now, I'm not really the confrontational type, but I have to admit that I've really grown kind of tired of seeing so many false assertions and false accusations hurled against Christian universalism. So here I am making a YouTube video to answer the Gospel Coalition's 12 questions. But before we get started, I want to get a couple of things straight. First, I am not a convinced universalist because I went looking for it. I believed in everlasting conscious torment for many years, and I really wasn't motivated to question that. But when I began to look at the scriptures, I found that the case for defending that view was much less stable than I had believed. Universalism, you might say, surprised me when I didn't expect to find it. Second, I want to say that if you're watching this video because you're interested in a brand of universalism that argues against the existence of hell, or for the idea that all people will go to heaven regardless of their faith or behavior, you're going to be disappointed. I'd love for you to watch these videos, but you won't find a license here for a worldly agenda. In fact, and other than this one area, I'm a pretty conservative guy. I'm a complementarian. I believe in traditional marriage. I'm pro-life. I don't really even watch that many R-rated movies. Gladiator, I'll admit, is, uh, is one exception. And finally, I just want to make a quick note on the format I'll be following. I will not be quoting the full text of the Gospel Coalition article. Mainly, this is for the sake of brevity, but also because it's not my article and I'd rather spend more time giving you my responses. What I will be doing is considering and sharing the main point uh, from each question in the Gospel Coalition's article and answering those points in order. This will take several videos to complete, so I hope you stick around for the journey. All that said, let's kick things off by tackling the Gospel Coalition's first question. And the Gospel Coalition from here on out, we will probably just refer to as TGC. So, question one. How should we interpret Jesus' words regarding hell or Gehenna, the outer darkness, the fire that is not quenched, the worm that does not die, and the like? If everyone, without exception, is headed towards the same final destination with God, as universalists claim, then why do we find Jesus saying the sheep will be separated from the goats, the wheat will be separated from the weeds? Separation is occurring in all these passages, but if universalism is true, there can be no truly lasting separation. In that case, isn't Jesus' teaching highly misleading? TGC's question here highlights the importance of making a clear distinction between the brands of universalism that, universalism that many people are familiar with and the universalism that is rooted in a biblical and historical understanding of Scripture. It is true that some universalists claim that all roads lead to heaven. Fate will be without distinction after death. But this is not what the universalists in the early church believed, nor is it the universalism that is revealed to us in the Bible. The credible Christian universalist looks at the passages that reveal a separation between the sheep and the goats and the wheat and the weeds and so on, and really just agrees there will be a real separation between those who are in Christ and those who are not. But a fixed separation denotes only that a person must face the realities that such a separation is characterized by, not that they will be in the heart of those things or experience those things forever and ever and ever. Some of the confusion arises because when we think of the word eternal, we often think it's synonymous with everlasting or inescapable. 
but that's not necessarily the case. Check out my next video where I'll respond to these issues as presented by TGC and like and subscribe to discover more videos on the topic as they drop. Thanks for hanging out. This is the Orthodox Universalist Channel. Thank <music> you.